so I seem to be a product of the CIA defense industry or something. My dad worked on nuclear missiles. I grew up in Hanford, Washington, where uh, it's, it's where they made the plutonium and shit. Uh, and uh, uh, I seem to have been moved around in the defense industry. Seems like seems like I was brought up by the defense industry. And uh, in high school, I hung out with. Uh, uh, General Davies' son, I got opportunity of a lifetime to get like, uh, let's see, trained by, he was like the, he was the guy who was like, I got to talk to the, the general that was in charge of the base that was training all the F-16s and F-15s for the Cold War, you know, like at the height of the Cold War. And uh, I went off to ASU, um, I worked for Ticketmaster. Uh, Peter, Peter Gadwell was my mentor for like uh, six years. I talked to him every day at lunch, and uh, he he admired Frank Cush, the the football coach, and uh, Dr. David Finis was the dean of the uh, College of Engineering. I studied computer systems engineering, and uh, he uh, he uh, he came out of the Air Force. Um, my my, I, I got a master's in electrical engineering. I, I studied control systems. It's what I liked. I wasn't interested. In, they, they tried to get me into uh, spread spectrum, cell phone shit. I didn't like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Higgins was my uh, advisor. He was a was an Irish guy. Uh, I guess he had something to do with the space shuttle. And uh, so, uh, I, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, my skill set, uh, I... Like in terms of like ratios of like like my skills, it's kind of like 25 years experience with like low level assembly programming, data sheets, computer systems engineering. I'm I'm actually an expert on ma on doing the operating creating the operating system that I made. I mean, there's other si stuff to know, but uh, it's not relevant to making my operating system. And uh, uh, so I got like 25 years on computer science I got like uh, maybe let's just say this is just for ratios I got like five years with electrical engineering I've done some hardware got a couple of circuit boards made worked with I receiver up in uh, Las Vegas at graphic technologies and uh, uh, I uh, I studied uh, I, I, I studied I, I worked at a uh, Zytec with uh, uh, Larry Moore he's like a British guy or something I don't know Anyway, so that was kind of like a, uh, a more professional scene. Went to London, uh, worked on image processing. Uh, I did like, uh, uh, it was image processing stuff for the Bank of England. And anyway, so, uh, and then uh, I got maybe like three years experience with control systems. So let's just say 25 computer science, five electrical, three control systems. Uh, my brother was Danny Davis. He was a drummer and I, I grew up uh, liking uh, heavy metal and uh, let's just say like Guns N' Roses is kind of Guns N' Ro Roses, Alice in Chains, uh, Ministry. Uh, how about uh, these are like bands that Danny hooked me up with. Uh, most of them are like uh, uh, they're, they're they have the morality of Catholics or something, you know. Uh, the you know I was led off into atheism with the you know the computer science stuff. And I came back, and I was kind of like ashamed when I look at these, like the rock people. They didn't like, uh, they didn't, they didn't stray, right? So like, I got like a prodigal son thing going on, and uh, and anyway, so uh, so my vision is uh, is, hey, look, uh, uh, we got a lot of Air Force stuff in uh, Arizona, Nevada. We got Area 51. We got like. Uh, this was the heart of the Cold War defense industry. With uh, when I was, I lived in Goodyear, where they had the uh, the Goodyear Aerospace. They did synthetic aperture radar there, so there's like Area 51. Um, we have uh, 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 Luke Air Force. I don't know all the Air Force Base. Luke Air Force Base, Creech, um, Nellis, and then there's like Davis Moth, and and I don't know. There's even more than that. This is like. This is like the the center of the Air Force in the world, and near as I can tell. Um, and uh, in fact, they got like a whole bunch of uh, uh, they got a boneyard down at Davis Moth at Air Force Base. 
if you go watch the video, they say it's the second largest Air Force in the world uh, on the ground if you could ever get it repaired. So like, uh, this is like the, uh, the and uh, long-term strategy, my dad was in nuclear power, seems like we're strategi strategically situated as a kingdom. Um, uh, we got a, uh, we got like uranium here and stuff. You know, God talked about uh, uh, the land I'm giving you. You know, it's a, it's a good land to live in. You know, and uh, and uh, you know, I thought about including like uh, New Mexico in this little kingdom. I don't personally have any association. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, Peter Gadwood's got connections over there. You know, they got the Trinity site, so it really fits in. But like personally, I got no connection. I, I don't, it means nothing to me. And one thing I, I do know is like if I look at uh, uh, the rest of the nation, I don't want the rest. I don't want. I don't like the rest of the nation. And so this brings in an age of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, all 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 empires rise and fall. Uh, that's both a blessing and a curse, you know, because like uh, that's like the promise of the rainbow. I mean, all of us are paranoid of uh, of uh, something like uh, uh, the book 1984, like perpetual locked into hell, right? But like the assurance of the rainbow is. Uh, uh, all, all empires rise and fall, and uh, you, uh, I, uh, I, I, look at, I look at the Templar Knights, and it, it's kind of like I sort of stumbled into that, and uh, and it seems like uh, you know Jesus said, uh, uh, "From these rocks I can rise up children of Abraham." Well, it seems like I've been like risen up uh, by spontaneous generation into a Templar Knight. I seem to have connected with the, uh, I seem to have figured. I think I know the thinking of how that works. And uh, and anyway, so uh, I've uh, I built the the, the Jewish uh, third temple, uh, Temple OS. Uh, it's a kind of a strange uh, stretch, a little bit free thinking, but uh, if you read the, I, I've adopted the King James Bible as my official Bible. The reason for that is uh, uh, if you go in and start looking at it, you'll start seeing uh, uh, corruptions in the modern church. Uh, you know, the age of uh, reason came around, and they, they didn't like that superstition stuff. They are too proud, so they started, they, like, removed all the superstition stuff out of uh, all the Bibles and stuff. And now we got the, uh, now we got atheism, you know. And so, basically, I, I call myself the father of the counter-Renaissance. And uh, by that, you know, if you look in the Bible, there's, uh, there's the ages of man, like, there's a time for war, time for peace, time for hold close. There's also like a, an age of reason, an age of uh, science, and so forth. And uh, sometimes the pendulum swings uh, to the same extreme back and forth. And uh, it, it would be very easy for me to usher in an age of religion just as extreme as the age of science and atheism. I have that ability because I I, uh, I can show you how to talk to God. If you if you look in the King James and the uh, the chapter about Solomon's temple, it mentions an oracle. Well, what's an oracle? Okay. Well, I figured out how that works. Um, here's the deal. Uh, you ever seen like uh, uh, Horton and the Who, the uh, the Dr. Seuss, right? They got this uh, this little uh, uh, world on a speck of dust, and like, uh, here's the deal. Um, uh, if you make a random number out of, go do this. Go make a random number out of a Geiger counter, and uh, and uh, and then like uh, like talk to it, right? Uh, hey, tell us the secrets of dark matter. Hey, uh, uh, where did you come from? What are you doing? Why did the chicken cross the road? And then you you might get an answer, right? So like. They're gonna blow you off unless you like uh, make it worth their while. That, that's how God works. Um, the early Jews, uh, you know, I receiver said uh, to the Jews, uh, food is love, and uh, somehow they, uh, God started honoring uh, the Jewish sacrifices. Uh, God said when you give, uh, when you study the, uh, the thing on Cain and Abel, um, when you give an offering, uh, it's a fair barter basically. So you look at uh, Abel gives him steak. And uh, Cain gives him cucumbers, and like, like God's like, dude, is this love? Like, you give me cucumbers? It doesn't seem like love to me. Okay, so, uh, um, so the the that's the that's the way it works. So uh, then, uh, so you, you get your, you know, pretty. And to be quite honest, any source of randomness uh, you can use as an oracle, and uh, and uh, you, you you can generate random line numbers in the Bible. 
That's a good way. If you got a list, I got a file with 100,000 uh, words out of the dictionary. You can pick random words. And, uh, and uh, so any source of random numbers works. Uh, the critical thing is that you do an offering of love. Like, tell them jokes, funny jokes. That's what I recommend. Uh, and when you're talking to God, uh, you know, Jesus said, Abba, Father. Yeah, I, I kind of like to imagine Jesus as like the Godfather, you know, the one that, uh, you know, a little more adult or something like that, right? Because I'm an adult, right? So like, uh, tell them funny jokes, you know, and then, you, then uh, make an offering of love and then like uh, go randomly look up a passage. And, uh, you know, the Jewish temple was the center of their civilization. And uh, I see I see uh, Temple OS as some kind of... Uh, 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 something, a focus. You know, I, I don't claim it. Uh, I think it's going to be less than that. But like uh, in the Middle Ages, uh, they expressed uh, love of God by uh, glorifying. Okay, here's the deal. Um, God doesn't like for human creations to be glorified. He wants the human themselves. So you want to place yourself in a position to bring maximum glory to your creator. So you go out there and be somebody glorious, okay? So in the Middle Ages, uh, they, they made these illuminated manuscripts, and they, they had the manual dexterity and so forth, and they, they, created, they had a concept of beauty. You know, I've, uh, I've looked at this from the perspective of artificial intelligence, and uh, um, God, is, God, God created us, and if you, if you, you know, uh, we're in the image of God, right? So like, uh, uh, I'm kinda, I look at it in the same way, if I were creating artificial intelligence, uh, you can see, well, anyway, so uh, uh, when, a, a, when a child is learning, uh, that's when it's most glorious. Uh, you can understand that if you know anything about artificial intelligence. Uh, one of the fundamental principles, we don't want to be robots. We want to be, uh, so like, um, here, here's something, uh, uh, there's something called like a life hack. Okay, that's where like, uh, let's say like uh, you break your collarbone and uh, your shoe's untied. You got to like figure out how to tie it. And like the uh, the eyelid is like uh, is, it's gonna be hard to read thread. You got you got a big mess. So you gotta like figure out a new way to tie a shoe with a broken collarbone. You gotta put your foot in a crazy position. And this is kind of like how Templar training works, right? So like uh, uh, you wanna you don't wanna be the uh, artif basically uh, it wouldn't be too surprising if we find ourselves fighting artificial intelligence. And to defeat it, here's a couple of things. Uh, we want to stop being robots, so uh, don't don't do uh, anything repetitive. Like I don't, I I I have banned uh, vanity exercises. Anything like lifting weights, ban ban vanity exercises. You get all your uh, strength. If you want strength, go do manual labor. Uh, in the military, uh, I don't know. Like uh, could dig foxholes for practice or something. But even better would be uh, something like actually meaningful. Uh, the only way, the only re, the only way you should train is do something useful. Okay, like you go dig, you go make uh, extra bases in uh, the desert. Okay, go build extra bases or something. You know, we, we could make meaningless foxholes, but why not construct extra bases? Okay, so uh, you look at the the Battle of New Orleans. I've studied Andrew Jackson. He was lucky. Okay, he's kind of he's a critical person. Uh, he was lucky, and this this actually shows that. Uh, you know, in the Middle Ages, they had a concept that the better man wins in battle. And it seems like, uh, you know, God chooses the winners and losers. So, like, uh, I've studied Braveheart and, uh, you know, the, the Irish guy and stuff. And, uh, you know, if God's got to choose, like, hey, who do I give the luck bonus to, you know? Well, there you go. Like, uh, do I... So, like, uh, you know, the Nazis got this notion of, uh, of uh, intelligence as the supreme thing. Hey, and guess what? Uh, the, the best genes are the ones that, uh, that God loves the most, right? Because those are the ones he's going um, to keep, right? So you want to make yourself so God loves you. Because like Mr. Terry say, Hey God, who you want to party with? Uh, them dull loser Mormons? Or Mr. Terry, the hilarious Irish guy, right? So like, because that's what it comes down to. you right? Like, uh, hey dude, uh, like, you, you made yourself dull. Like, you know, that was dumb. You're a coward. So like, so like, uh, Hey, yeah, hey, you're, how are you going to, like, entertain God? You're just dumb. You know, Jesus, uh, you're, just, you're dull, right? I don't care how smart you are. You're too dull. Like, hey, you've got a million dull people, right? So, like, uh, are you fun? Like, well, why do I want to spend time with you, you know? So, like, uh, anyway, so, uh, 
Uh, let's just stop there.